Richter's got a brand new groove. Hey everyone, welcome to Princess Gay, I'm your host Connie, and today we are here with my blind reaction to episodes 7 and 8 of Castlevania Nocturne. Uh, these are the final two episodes of the season, and while I believe season 2 is already greenlit, I don't think there's word on when it's going to happen, so for now, we're just going to finish this out and see how things go. So Richter, Richter has gotten some new upgraded uh, abilities thanks to his magic being unlocked. Um, his grandfather is supposedly going to continue working with them. He's going to join the cause too, I, I presume. So he can at least fight. We know that. Um, on top of it, we've now met Erzabeth's Battery, the main villain who I'm just not really impressed by so far. Um, mind you, she hasn't really done much yet, but, you know, just in terms of appearance, I guess you could say, uh, design, she's a little underwhelming. For as much as they built her up, her design is just, it, it doesn't do much for me. And not just in the sexiness way. Uh, because we already know no one's going to compare to Jolta in that. Um... Though Olrox does at least give a fighting chance. <laughs> um, but, yeah, it, it's just Erzabet Battery is just kind of a plain design, honestly. A very generic vampire lady design that just really doesn't do much for me. Again, again in terms of more than just uh, visual appeal. It's just, it's very bland. But, she might still end up being a very captivating character. We'll just have to see. Um, meanwhile, Maria is kind of, like, confronting her father at different periods and times because he's a hypocritical piece of shit. Um... And honestly, I could see him dying by the end of this season. Uh, genuinely, I, I don't see him really surviving for long. He's, like, not as bad as the Bishop of Greshit in the original series, but he's still pretty damn bad, it, just in different ways. The Bishop of Greshit was, like, you know, horrifically evil in so many different manners. He didn't work with the bad guys but he was more actively evil i would say maria's father here is he genuinely i think believes he's doing this for the right reasons he's not but he believes he is the problem is to use an overused quote the road to hell is paved with good intentions. He may think he has good intentions here, but in the end, like, his selfishness and gross negligence and everything is just getting people killed. Innocent people. And that's blood on his hands. Him working with and serving Elizabeth Battery or Erzabeth, not Elizabeth, Erzabeth Battery, is just uh, causing murders to occur. And there's no way to justify that under his religion. So no, he is not in the right, he is not just doing this for the right reasons. It's past that point at this time. So, yeah. So, I guess we're just going to continue to see what happens. But since 
we are getting into the finale here, I assume things are really going to, you know, step up. I assume we're going to have our big final confrontation of the season. I still believe that Jolta's not going to make it out of the season. Jolta feels like a season one villain. And, and I don't mean that in any bad way. I, I just mean that it, it feels like th this was always meant for her to be a one season thing. Just to set up Erzabeth Battery, who's going to be the main villain, and to uh, prepare for other uh, notable villains to pop up as well in the next seasons. Um, I don't know how many are planned for this, like compared to the original series, but there's more than likely going to be new additions to Battery's uh, court, you could say, in the next season. Uh, they're, it's probably going to be very similar to how it was done in the original series, which I don't actually mind. I know a lot of people would, would definitely rate, r rant, bleh, about, uh, them just copying themselves and doing the same thing over again, but it just kind of makes sense as a plot point. It just kind of makes sense that she'd bolster her numbers, especially if Jolta does die. Jolta is kind of like her, her big general right now. So if Jolta dies, she's absolutely going to bolster her numbers. That just, again, makes sense. And I fully expect Jolta to die. As much as I would love to see more of her. It just makes sense for the story. Uh, Olrox is definitely going to survive. Like, he he's a main player. Um... He's going to survive at least until until uh, the end of Season 2, I think. Again, I don't know how many seasons are being planned for this. But I definitely see him at least surviving into Season 2. He might die by the end of Season 2, but... At least he won't die by the end of this season. Um... I'm just, I'm just curious as to exactly what we're going to get here now that we've got all of these big reveals kind of out of the way. I guess no better way to find out than to watch, so let's get to it. When, the re bleh, when this redirect fades to black, uh, Paul... I'm just messing this entire thing up. When the video fades to black, pause the redirect and go to the description below. Follow the link to the reaction, and after you watch it, come back here to the redirect and resume play. Because after it fades to black and then fades back in, everything from that point forward will be my afterthoughts and will contain spoilers to the episode. <sighs> Excuse me, episodes. Um, but that being said, thank you so much for tuning in, and I will see you at the reaction. And we are back, and we'll begin with spoilers in 3, 2, 1, now. Hate having to see her go, but... God, were we treated this season. Uh, Drolta is probably... Like, I'm, I'm not even kidding here. And yes, by the way, I'm starting off these afterthoughts horny. Deal with it. <laughs> Drolta is... I'm not even... I'm not even, like exaggerating probably one of the hottest characters i've seen probably in just media in general like i make i make no secret of the fact that um i find certain characters attractive i'm very open about that <laughs> i mean between all my smash or pass videos and everything i i, I think it's pretty clear um, but Drolta is one of those characters that I have, like, very visibly simped over, probably more than mostly anyone else on this channel. A at least from my memory that I can think of. Um... And mind you, like, there's there's characters from various shows that I have very much simped over, that I have very much uh, shown interest in. 
um, that you guys didn't see because I didn't do reactions to those. Like uh, with Verasica in Hell of a Boss. Um, I, I've mentioned before how I, I'm almost kind of glad I didn't do a reaction to that series because with episode 3 and my first time seeing Verasica, I was a mess. <laughs> but Jolta, it's like, you guys got to see that one. You guys got to see me simping over her. And, and it's... And Old Rocks, even, actually. <laughs> but... It's one of those things where it's like, I, I, it's one of the very few things I think that embarrasses me. Like, admittedly. Like, I'm not ashamed of it. Like, I'm not ashamed of, of simping over these characters and whatnot. Um, there's nothing wrong with it or anything. So I'm not, like, ashamed. I'm not, like, going to, like, be upset by that. And then by you guys seeing that, I'm not going to, like, do everything in my power to stop it, necessarily. But, it, it, it's, it does get a little embarrassing sometimes when I, when I realize how down bad I am for a character like this. And, the reason I'm kind of starting with all of this and really hammering in how much I simmed for Jolta, and to a slightly lesser degree, all rocks. The reason I'm bringing this all up is because Erzabet does absolutely fucking nothing to me. Like, I don't know if, like, that's just me, or if... I, I don't know if anyone else agrees with that, but Erzabet, like, I actively am not attracted to. Like, I don't necessarily find her, like, butt-fucking-ugly or anything. That's rude. <laughs> um, but I am just very actively unattracted to her. She does nothing for me. At all. And it's just, like... She seems so generic... I mean, mind you, until she goes into her, like, beastie form at the end there. Like, seriously, it's like, it gave me werewolf vibes. <laughs> Is that, am I the only one, like, with her, like, bestial form at the end there? Um, with the, like, for lack of a better word, dog nose? I, I don't mean that in any, like, rude sense. I, I'm just like, it looks like a dog nose. I, I mean that literally. <laughs> She looks like she turned into, like, a werewolf or something. Uh, or not even, like, a full transformation into one. Like, a partial werewolf. It, it's a wild design. And it's not even that that I'm necessarily just unattracted to. Like, even in a regular, uh, normal state, I'm just completely unattracted to her. And again, it's not that I find her ugly. It's just I don't find her attractive. I guess you would say she's kind of like in the middle for me for that. <laughs> Just, she's there, she exists. Um, but even beyond that, I don't find her that interesting. I, I really don't. Like, outside of her insane levels of ability and power, she doesn't come across as that... Um, she she doesn't come across as that uh, interesting of a character. She's very bland. She's very boring. She's no Carmilla. I'll I'll tell you that uh, Carmilla in the last series was a fascinating character. She had a lot more depth and intrigue to her, and and I felt like I was actually more actively intimidated. She felt like she would. Uh, be willing to do anything while Erzabet feels like she's able to do anything. You know, you know, you know what I mean with the difference there? Erzabet is so obnoxiously strong. It's it's to a point where it's actually just kind of boring. Like I, I don't sense a lot of depth and character to her that really helps her to stand out. Dralta is so fascinating as a character. 
And again, it's not even the attractiveness thing here. Jolta as a character is really fun, really entertaining. She has so much personality. She's so much better than Erisabeth. Olrox is so much better than Erisabeth. Hell, the fucking, um, um, Abbott. I, I wanted to say Bishop, but I knew that wasn't right. The fucking Abbott is more interesting as a villain than her. Um, I'm just like, I'm, I'm disappointed, you know? I, 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 I want my main villains in, in shows like this to be intimidating, to be scary, to have personality and character. Think about from the original, not just Commit Carmilla, but you had uh, the likes of Dracula himself. You had fucking Death. Like, Death was an amazing character. Especially once you found out who he was. <laughs> he was fantastically handled in that regard. But Erisabeth, it's just like, She's just hyper-powerful beyond anything we've seen before. And that's kind of it. She has no, like, strong personality to speak of. She's just kind of boring. It's like, when literally every other villain we have in this is, is vastly more interesting, that's just kind of disappointing. Um, my prediction on deaths was wrong, by the way. I, I mentioned this in the reaction, but I'll mention it here as well. Uh, because I predicted, uh, Jolta was gonna die, which that is the one that did happen. But I also predicted that the Abbot and, uh, Terra were gonna die. But neither of them died. The Abbot's just still hanging out there, just all good. And, um, Terra got turned into a vampire by, um, Erzabet. And mind you, that's not good. And she's probably going to, like, lose her sense of self and become, you know, kind of a mindless vampire servant to uh, Erzabeth. And probably going to be an active enemy that we're going to have to fight in Season 2. But still, she didn't die. And, and I'm, I'm genuinely surprised that we had so little of our of our major characters die. Like, the only... There there were actually just very few notable deaths in, in this season. I, I, I have to feel like they're going to build up to that and do a lot more with that in season two. Because I guess you could count Edouard, but he he's alive, technically. <laughs> even if he's in a different state, even if he technically was, you know, killed, he's alive now. And he is himself. So it's like, even if he doesn't remember everything, he is still Edouard. So, yeah, that's still a thing you have to take into account. The only notable death was Jolta, who, again, felt obvious she was going to die. I was actually getting a little worried there that my prediction was going to be completely wrong and even she wasn't going to die. Because it's like, the ending felt like it was going on for a while. And I'm like, wait, this is about to end, right? Jolta's not going to die. But then Alucard comes in at the last minute. And let's talk about that. I'm not 100% surprised Alucard is back for this series. Because it, it makes sense he would still be around. Like, he has the everlasting life thing, too. He's a vampire. I mean, a half vampire, but still a vampire. Um, so it makes sense that he'd still be around. That's not a surprise. I just wasn't quite expecting him to come in there, you know? Like, it, it, if he did return, I, I wouldn't have thought it was going to happen until Season 2. But having it happen at the very end of Season 1, having this, like, big triumphant return, killing Jolta, is... One hell of a way to make a return. Just, you know, leave off on that cliffhanger. He definitely has a slightly different design. 
And I, I think it kind of, I, I think it's supposed to match the games because I know his design slightly changes between different games. Um, and I think that's what they're going for here. It's very clearly the same voice. So that's, that's not different. And it's very clearly supposed to be the same one because this is a follow-up series to the original Castlevania series. So it's the same one that we saw last time with Trevor and Sypha and all them. It, he his look has just been upgraded <laughs> and i'm sure there's ways that that could be explained in the series but it could also just not be explained it could just be a visual thing for our sakes which either way i'm fine with as long as he's still the same character i guess that's what really matters um he looks more pretty i guess you could say like here i'm gonna mute this uh, so I can go back and look at it real quick. Oh, jeez, hold on. Yeah, he's more pretty. Like he's he has he's glowing for one. He seems to be like glowing white with the like the bright yellow eyes, and he has more like um, kind of rounded features. It looks like. Um. In the original series, he kind of, like, outside of, like, the silver hair and the, just the notable design elements in general, he didn't look special, if if that makes any sense. Like, he looked like a normal guy, just with silver hair and everything, compared to the other character designs in the series. But here, he looks special. Like... The glowing and everything, the, again, the, the just design of his appearance, of his facial structure and everything, he looks like he's something, like, really special. And I'm very, I, I'm very interested to see if they keep that in the second season or if they go back to, like, the classic design. Or maybe they kind of, like, bridge it, like, in between the two. Maybe, like, this is just because of him using, like, his powers here or something. I don't know. I, I don't know. If, if they keep this design, I'll be fine with it. Again, as long as it's the same character, that's what matters. <laughs> um, but, yeah, it, it's really cool to see him return like that. And at, kind of out of nowhere, too. It's just like, oh, hey, suddenly Alucard. <laughs> um... But yeah, so he, he's he's clearly going to be a major character in the second season. I'm a little surprised that Richter's grandfather, that he didn't come in at, at all during this uh, final climax. Like, I kind of expected him to. But he didn't come into play at all. He just, he stayed out of the battle. I guess he's just staying retired. He only um, helped out for a little bit. Um, which is a little disappointing, but at the same time, I, I, I guess I get it with what his character has sh been shown to be. It makes sense. Um, but the season also ends, like, with, outside of Dralta's death and Alucard's return, an absolute failure by the good guys. Like, it is an absolute loss. Um, they weren't able to push the, the machine into hell. Terra was lost. They had to escape. They could not do anything to Erzabet. They couldn't even save, uh, the abbot. Like, he couldn't even be saved in the end. Without question, this was an absolute loss. The town has taken over. Everything's gone to shit. It's 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 all fucked. <laughs> and I like that. I like that the the season ended with our heroes just absolutely not winning. And not only just not winning because I mean we expected that they weren't going to take out Erzabeth and everything, but they so super actively got defeated to such a heavy degree that they didn't even succeed in anything 
except, you know, escaping from being killed by Jolta there. That is literally the only thing that they succeeded at. And that's not even through any fault of, or any act of their own. That's because of Alucard. So, does that even really count? They, like, Alucard succeeded in killing Jolta in the end, but they absolutely failed. They failed at everything. And I, again, I kind of like that because it, 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 it builds up the threat and the tension of the bad guys here. It makes them come across as more intimidating when our heroes just can't do shit to them. And honestly, that's needed because Erzabet alone is boring. So you need to add that in to make her a little more intimidating, to increase that excitement factor. Now the only question remains is, uh, well, actually there's two questions. Question one, when are we going to get season two? I assume it's going to be sometime this year, but I'm just wondering when it's going to be. I'm thinking it won't be before the summer. I could see it being in the summer, but it won't. I don't think it'll be before the summer. Though I could be wrong. Who knows? Netflix doesn't, like, promote their stuff too far ahead of time. H have you noticed that? Like, when a new Netflix series is coming out, unless it's, like, something massive, you you don't really know about it until, like, maybe a month or two beforehand. Which means, in all technicality, it could be coming out in March and we just wouldn't know. Because they, they don't advertise it, probably. It's not even just with a new series, a new seasons of certain series, too. Unless it's something like Stranger Things or whatnot, they're not going to advertise it super well in advance. They just don't do that. Netflix is shit with promoting their uh, shows. Let's be honest. That's always been one of their biggest issues. They are absolute dog shit at promoting their shows. It's why so many anime that they've gotten have just not done well. Carol on Tuesday, Doro Hidoro, and so on and so forth. Great Pretender... None of those have done as well as they needed to do because Netflix got a hold of them here in the U.S. And because of that, because of their lack of advertising, these shows and more, like JoJo's Bizarre Adventure Stone Ocean is a big example, really did not do well in terms of viewership. And it sucks because all of those, all of those anime and all are great. But Netflix shot themselves in the foot because they don't properly advertise unless, it, again, unless it's something like fucking Stranger Things. So, this could come out, again, like in March. Even, hell, fuck, it could come out in fucking end of February. And we wouldn't know until, like, maybe a couple weeks beforehand. Maybe a month if we're lucky. Two months if you know, Netflix actually gets their shit together. <laughs> but, yeah, it's like, it could come at any time, pretty much. We'll see. We'll see. Um, obviously, I will continue reacting to this when that does come. Uh, see, when Season 2 happens, we will be continuing. But the second question that we now have is, what is replacing this? Uh, because we are done with this for now on Fridays, and... Um, although we're starting has been hotel, we do need something else in this slot. So what is going to replace Castlevania Nocturne in this slot? And I, I've been thinking about it because there's a lot of different things I could choose. Um, there's a lot of different shows that I want to get back to or I want to start. And to be fair, this slot is, you know, a Connie's Choice slot. Uh, Fridays are for one are for shows that I just want to do. Uh, whether they're shows that I am continuing from before, or shows that I am starting new, they're shows that are my choice. 
And so there's been a couple that I've been kind of uh, leading up to, I guess you could say. A couple that I wanted to get to kind of next and everything. Um, and although there's multiple I could choose and multiple I could go with, I think right now the option that I want to go with the most is something that I want to return to. Because it's been too long and I promised we would get back to it. I, I want to say like 2022. I could, I could check real quick. <laughs> it's actually very easy to check when I uh, said we would... Because uh, I said we would be getting back to it soon. Around the time I posted a certain video. And, and then I just kind of didn't. <laughs> and, and, and it was mostly because of just other stuff. Either starting or coming back or whatnot. And I just never got back to it. Like I said I was going to. And it sucks because, you know, it's been quite a while. Um, yeah, 2022, I said it was going to return from hiatus because it had been on hiatus for a while. Um, for years, actually. Wow. Wow. Um, and then I came back and I finished out the season. But now uh, it's been since 2022, like a year and a half by this point, since we last got to it. And I said I was going to get back to it. And I said it was, wasn't going to be as long. And it's not as long of a wait. I mean, I'm not wrong about that, but it's been longer than I wanted. Uh, so it's time to go back to Trollberg. We're continuing Hilda with Season 2. If, if that wasn't obvious at this point, um, which it might not have been, I don't know. <laughs> but yeah, we're going back to Hilda. It's been a while. Um, and after that, we can move on to other stuff. But I, I, I want to get back to this. I don't want to keep pushing this off even further. There's other shows that I've been pushing off too far as well too long as well um but those are gonna have to wait for various other reasons um right we can only we can only replace it with one thing i mean technically we could replace it with more but i'm just not going to because i like our schedule with where it's at right now um i don't want to add more stuff in you know <laughs> um so like I said, uh, Hilda will be replacing this. We'll be starting that right away next week. And yeah, that is the plan. If you have any questions, any thoughts, if you want to leave anything about this episode, uh, let me know what you thought of this final, these final two episodes, I should say, of Castlevania Nocturne in the comments below. And uh, yeah, I'm hoping to see some more great stuff in Season 2 when that comes out, but yeah. Uh, thank you so much for tuning in. For now, I'm Connie and I'm signing off. See you all next time.